Hello everyone, let's take a look at the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT today. This is AMD's second inline RDNA 2 GPU, slotting in just below the Radeon RX 6900 XT. It is also in the unique position of being priced $50 lower than Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3080, which is pretty much the sweet spot for high-end graphics card before you go off into the deep end with much bigger price tags and very small performance improvements. But after such a long absence in the high-end GPU market, can AMD make a comeback that's enough to get people to pay attention to them again? Well, I do think so. Let's start with the unboxing first. AMD is very proud of the effort they put into designing the reference Radeon RX 6800 series cards, and the front of the box is populated by a beautiful image of the card. Around the sides, AMD made sure to print enough of their branding, while over on the bottom side, there are the necessary regulatory information. On the inside, we get to see yet another image of the card as well as a welcome message to the red team. Now this is a pretty cool nod towards AMD fans and I appreciate it. The cover that has the image of the card lifts off to reveal a little booklet of information on its underside, and finally, the graphics card itself. Once the card is out of the box, we can finally take a closer look at the card. The front is occupied by a trio of fans, which sport linked blades similar to ASUS's ASIL Tech fans. AMD actually put in the effort to add a silver finish to the leading edge of the blades, making them stand out just a little bit more. And of course, there's a huge R in the middle in case you forget that this is a Radeon card, and the shroud is finished in a matte silver with black trim around the sides, and a few mirror shine bits around the center fan. Classy. Over on the back, we see more silver and a mounting bracket which improves the contact between the GPU and the cooler. In the center of the mounting bracket, there's a huge array of multi-layer ceramic capacitors unlike any we have seen before. For those of you who are pretty nitpicky about the capacitor layout on the GeForce RTX 30 series cards, this card is going to make you drool in envy. Now looking at the side, we see a huge hole for hot air to leave, and there's some red trim here to remind everyone that this is a Radeon card. The fins are spaced out quite a bit, we should bode well for airflow and dust silence, but it might not be great for cooling. We'll talk about that more in a bit. And right at the end of the card, we have the dual 8-pin power connectors. No need to deal with any weird 12-pin dongles and adapters here. On the other side, it's just essentially a huge wen. Although as this side is pressed up against the motherboard, hot air will not have an easy time living from this end. The only bit of lighting you get on the Radeon RX 6800 XT reference card is the Radeon emblem on the side of the card. It only glows in red, which might be a bummer for the RGB enthusiasts out there. On the tail end of the card, you have four holes, which might come in handy for you to mount a support arm or something, but its main purpose is for mounting in server cases. Oh, on the other end, there's two DisplayPort 1.4a along with the HDMI 2.1 and USB-C output. It is quite interesting to see USB-C here, considering that Nvidia did drop it from the RTX 30 series cards, despite debuting it in the RTX 20 series cards. Perhaps AMD sees a future for the virtual link standard in the near future that Nvidia doesn't? Before we get to the performance data, let's talk a bit about the test system used. We were provided with a sample of the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X which we have enabled PBO on to get the most out of the CPU without too much tinkering, and we paired it with the sweet TeForce Extreme ARGB 3600CL14 memory. Power is handled by the Cooler Master V1200 Platinum, so there's absolutely no worries about running out of power, at least on the PSU's end. The drivers we used were provided by AMD specifically for testing the Radeon RX 6800 XT although an updated version is available publicly now. With that out of the way, let's check out the performance data. In superposition, we can see that the Radeon RX 6800 XT is slotting itself below the GeForce RTX 3080 cards. It comes pretty close to offering two times the performance of the Radeon RX 5700 XT, even though the Radeon RX 5700 XT card we have tested here had a pretty healthy factory overclock. If anything, AMD finally beat the RTX 2080 Ti with a nice comfortable margin. After quite a number of years without a flagship GPU that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nvidia's top-of-the-line cards, this is a really refreshing change. 3 Mark sees more of the same, although now we actually see it sit between the GeForce RTX 3080 cards we have tested. As previously observed in superposition, it leaves its predecessor in the dust with close to 2 times the performance, and it also literally obliterates Nvidia's last-gen flagship card. Ray tracing performance appears to be its weakness though, as we can see that in 3D Mark Port Royal, it only comes up slightly above the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. The GeForce RTX 3080 are significantly faster in this benchmark, but that is to be expected as Nvidia is already on their second generation RT cores with Ampere, while AMD is just stepping into the waters. I would still say that this is a very respectable result though. 
And now, let's take a look at gaming performance. There are three modes that we tested because AMD allows you to use Rage mode to bump up the power limit and push for higher clocks. We also tested the Radeon RX 6100 XT in its maximal configuration, which is to have Rage mode and smart access memory enabled. At 4K, the performance is pretty good. As you can see, it delivers very playable frame rates here in most games. The only stumbling block here are the DXR enabled titles, which are presumably optimized for Nvidia's architecture. At 1440p, we see even better frame rates, and we are now looking at frame rates that are in the realm of high refresh rate monitors. Definitely good results to be had across the board, although the same caveats still apply. Ray tracing in today's titles, which are presumably optimized for Nvidia RT architecture, just isn't going to paint AMD in a good light at all. Otherwise, we are seeing very playable frame rates in most of the games today. 1080p sees ridiculously high frame rates, and at this point, it is going to be more of a CPU bottleneck scenario, which I do believe is happening with our Ryzen 5 5600X. If you're planning to game at 1080p, I would recommend waiting for AMD's more affordable offerings, as the Radeon RX 6800 XT is definitely way too overkill for this resolution. For the full list of games that we have tested on the Radeon RX 6800 XT, do head on over to our written review to see them. Now, onto the clocks, thermals, and power figures. AMD seems to have done a very good job of optimizing the card, and we'll first take a look at Rage Mode, which sees pretty high peaks, although on average it only drew 254 watts. Keep this number in mind as it gets interesting later on. The GPU temperature is always under 71 Celsius, but as AMD reports the hotspot temperature, which is the temperature referenced for boost and fan behaviors, we'll be talking about that. It hits about 110 Celsius, which is the limit for AMD before it starts throttling, although we did see it cut back on boost as early as 103 Celsius. The average clocks achieved here were 2269 MHz. In balanced mode, which is the default mode that the card ships with, power draw is also on average 254 watts. However, the highest hotspot temperatures were 107 Celsius, which is just a touch lower than the 110 Celsius we saw with rage mode enabled. It appears that the cooling system on our sample of the Radeon RX 6800 XT is insufficient to allow for a proper boost in rage mode, as our average clocks were actually higher here at 2,281 MHz. Not by much, but just interesting to note. In some games, we actually see a regression in terms of performance by enabling Rage Mode, which is quite possibly explained by the data we see here. The fan speeds in the balanced mode are also lower, which allowed it to operate more quietly. Now, I think it is time to compare it against the GeForce RTX 3080. We do not have a Founders Edition card on hand to make a more apples-to-apples -apples comparison, but we will be using the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 3080 OC Edition, which has a nice factory overclock and a significantly higher 370 watt power limit. Even then, we can see that the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT is pretty impressive, as it can still trade punches very well against an overclocked RTX 3080. It wins in some games and loses in some. The biggest difference comes in the AMD optimized titles like Dirt 5 and also the recent AC Valhalla, while the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT pulls ahead quite significantly. Of course, in the titles that support DXR and DLSS, the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT doesn't even stand a chance. Control is a pretty brutal example, where the Radeon RX 6800 XT only pushes out 19 frames per second, while the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 3080 OC Edition manages 31 without DLSS, or the very playable 72 FPS once DLSS is turned on. At 4040p, the gap shrinks quite a bit, which is quite interesting. Still, the main caveats apply, whereby the DXR enabled games see Nvidia pull ahead, and especially so once DLSS is enabled. And AMD pulls ahead in the titles that optimize for them. I must of course mention that enabling DLSS on the RTX cards doesn't make for a fair comparison, but it is probably worth mentioning if you're out to get the most performance at the maximum graphical fidelity that's offered by the games. Once again, if you want the full list, you can head on over to our website to see the full comparison. But it is probably worth mentioning also, the AMD's card draws around 254 watts as we have seen earlier, while Nvidia's representative here draws 370 watts. Even if we assume that the performance is going to be the same on the Reference Founders Edition which has a 320 watt TGP, we are still seeing AMD offering the better efficiency figures here. And the fact that it uses two 8-pin power connectors definitely makes me happier than Nvidia's 12-pin connector that requires an adapter to work. So now, is AMD the card to get for 4K gaming? Well, with its slightly more affordable price tag of $649, I do think AMD has a fighting chance. Sure, Nvidia has the upper hand in the games that optimize to take full advantage of its features like ray tracing and DLSS, 
and that's true for AMD as well, with quite a number of AMD optimized games out now. We also have to remember that the AMD RDNA 2 architecture is in both the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S consoles, so the probability of having more AMD optimized games in the future is definitely quite high. AMD also has an answer to its DLSS in the pipeline, dubbed Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which may take away some of the advantage that DLSS offers. So the future definitely looks bright for the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT. But until then, my recommendation would be to go with Nvidia if you fancy today's games bathed in ray trace lighting, and go with AMD if you think that ray tracing is not important to you for now. Now, onto the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT itself as a card. I would say that it is a great looking one with just a nice splash of red to spice things up, and the USB-C output is great as well for those who own USB-C displays. It offers good performance, and smart access memory is a nice innovation, enough to spur Nvidia to come up with their own solution down the line. And I would say that the reference cooler here did a pretty good job at managing thermals compared to AMD's previous attempts. Still, I do think more improvements could be had as we can see that once Rage Mode is enabled, it seems to overwhelm the cooler causing it to appear counterintuitive in some games. Ray tracing performance, as mentioned earlier, is not exactly great, but I do think that it might boil down to the optimization that developers have put in place for NVIDIA, as after all, NVIDIA was the only GPU vendor with a hardware accelerated ray tracing solution for 2 years. Would I get the Radeon RX 6800 XT? I would, probably, although I would probably not get the reference design we tested here. The partner cards which have appeared in some markets do look pretty interesting, although the price might be quite prohibitive. Not to mention that availability appears to be quite spotty and some reports have pointed to them being worse than the RTX 30 series. With that said, I gladly welcome AMD's return to being competitive in the high-end GPU market. What do you think of the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT? Let us know in the comment section. As usual, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram for more content like this. I'm Mason Chan from Porter.net and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!